and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end as we focus on each volume. We keep the discussion spoiler free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we'll be covering the second part of Volume 56, Thank You, which covers chapters 547 through 551. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. Joining me today, we have Sean. This is Sean. We have Evan. What's up? And we have Cody. Let me out. I want to get out of prison. Let me out. <laughs> almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Final stretch. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> Yeah, so we are going to be wrapping up Impel Down, and we're going to be starting the next arc. So I'm very excited for uh, for this episode. I'm sure I'm alone oh, in that one. Yeah, there's, there's some, there's some, there's some cool stuff in this one. <laughs> okay, so let's get a little refresher before we dive into it. Blackbeard went rogue, abandoning his duties as one of the seven warlords, and instead chose to enter Impel Down. Luffy's team fought through level four, where Hannibal attempted to stop him. Eventually, Blackbeard reached level 4 as well. We made quick work of Hannibal and confronted Luffy. Luffy learned that the man he met in Jaya was Blackbeard, the one who captured Ace. After a brief skirmish, Jinbei reasoned with Luffy to keep moving forward in order to save Ace. Magellan was right on their tail as he took out Blackbeard's crew along the way before also taking out Ivan Cobb and Izuma, who tried to stay behind to hold the warden back. Luffy's group reunited with Buggy and Mr. Three. When they neared the exit, Magellan caught up. Luffy offered to stay behind to fight Magellan with the help of Mr. Three's wax wax powers. When the rest left, they were shocked to see all the Navy ships had already departed. They were able to see the ships in the distance, so Jinbei grabbed one of the doors and carried Crocodile, Mr. One, and Buggy to go secure a ship for their escape. Okay, so that's, um, that's where we left it off. So let's um, move right into Chapter 547, Island Ripper. Even with Mr. Three's wax powers, Magellan's poison is too potent and starts to spread across Luffy's wax armor. Magellan unleashes Hell's Judgment, forming a massive creature that is like a wall of poison. Luffy and Mr. Three retreat while Jinbei's team works on defeating the Navy soldiers on one of the ships. Ivankov uses a Hell Wink to blast himself and Inazuma up through the floor to arrive where the others are, thankfully, both still alive. At the exit, Jinbei tells everyone to jump into the sea to get away from Impel Down and Magellan. Luffy uses Gear 3 to smash a giant wall of wax into Magellan, knock him away to buy the other's time. As everyone jumps into the sea, they're caught by a group of whale sharks. Okay, thoughts on this one? Starting off, I just love the design of the Hell's Judgment creature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the scale, too. Just seeing, like, when it's hands on the ground, these prisoners just fully engulfed in, like, and being the size of one of its knuckles, it's so foreboding. I love this thing. Yeah, it's so cool looking. Very creepy. Just when yeah. you thought Magellan couldn't get any cooler. <laughs> yeah. Really making up for his one downside. In my <laughs> like, Yes, it's really bad, but look, look what I can do when I'm not violently shitting. Like... <laughs> Four hours a day, I'm on it. <laughs> He's got a strong four hours in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really cool looking design, though. Like it has kind of like a like a skull face, but then it even has like the horns that are like his. Like it mimics his horns, and he comes up the the top of his head. Yeah, love the design. It's like molten skull, so cool. Yeah, and even like the um, like the smoke kind of coming out of its mouth too, like the mm -hmm. like the poison poison gas. Like it gives it like that kind of creepy vibe as well, just kind of adding to how ominous it looks. Yeah, yeah. The art of Magellan's abilities has been a highlight of this arc for sure. Agreed. I'd say so. I'm a fan. Yeah, even like the first panel, like just seeing like the poison kind of dripping over Magellan, it looks really cool. Also, it's just like basically controlling your remotely with his own movements, like it's his stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then we get to see Croc and Mr. One wreaking havoc on this Navy ship. Doing some work. Mm -hmm. 
It's been a while since we've seen uh, Mr. Wine in action. Yeah, I forgot just how much damage he could cause. Looks like he took a, a page out of Sanji's book. Doing like the handstand with the spinning kicks. Yeah, yeah. That was sick. <laughs> the party table kick course. And our guy Buggy's just uh, sleeping on the job. <laughs> Eating on the job. <laughs> Mr. Mr. One's going full Beyblade. Yeah, <laughs> he's letting it rip. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the the great uh, return of Ivankov. Yeah, Thank when I read God. it, I was I was a little skeptical. I was wondering if this would be a Gaia situation, like well, a death like thing. It, it, I was just I was a little irked. I was like, how how. <laughs> the hormones, I don't get it because like Luffy had to stay in for an hour, but like it's it's fine, it's fine. Well, we'll get uh, to that. my no prize will just be um, maybe because Luffy was exposed to the poison a lot longer, um, it was maybe mm. more severe. Yeah, that would make sense. And he was by, I can probably handle the hormones better too because everyone creating, uh, yeah, but then the same would apply to uh, Inazuma. Um, because, mm. yeah, you assume I had to also recover. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it if it means getting to keep both I'll of take it. Awesome Oh, hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not mad. No, about no, no. I know. I know you weren't. Yeah, I know you weren't. I just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it's a, it's a valid um, question. It is. I was, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, mm, it's sure. a little weird uh, that they're, they're, they're fine now after being covered in poison, but, uh, well, like I kind of said before, um, I don't know if, if you guys were on the episode, but um, I was talking to Evan about how, like, the hormones are kind of like hand wavy, or it's like the speed force in like DC. How it's like you can just say, "Oh, wait, th- that's why it works because hormones." Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your catch all. Yeah, kind of suspend your disbelief a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. But it's also a series where Usopp's uh, Usopp's nose will be broken and then like a few panels later it's fine you know <laughs> but the panel of him crashing through is amazing I yeah. will say. <laughs> still got the big head too <laughs> <laughs> huge head but he, he hit his head on the back of the wall and the, knocked his head he passed out <laughs> You can see the bumps it left on the one of the last panels when uh, Iva uses the wink to kind of take a leap of faith here at the end. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so goofy. Yeah, and then we have this this moment where uh, Jean Bay tells them to jump into the sea and kind of take a leap of faith, which uh, very much reminded me of any lobby. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like, they were all saying, jump into the sea. And uh, Luffy seems to mm-hmm. put his faith in Jean Bay, even though he doesn't really know him too well. But he says he's Ace's friend, so that's enough reason for him to, to trust him. He, like, Jean Bay doesn't have, like, bad intentions, obviously, so it's like, like, there's a reason why he's saying jump into the sea. Mm-hmm. So even though they don't understand why, but they're like, just trust me, do it. <laughs> we don't have time. Honestly, Luffy has done crazier things at this point. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but it, it shows Luffy's faith in in Jembe here. I mean, he's just a friend of a friend at this point. But I feel like they've grown fond and have grown a, a bond throughout this arc. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely going out on a limb a lot. There's a lot of uh, Devil Fruit users in that in that party that made the yeah. jump. <laughs> yeah so definitely uh definitely hope he has a good plan here and uh he mm-hmm. does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some smiling whale sharks they look so happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah bringing uh dc back into this he's like aquaman talk to the fish <laughs> <laughs> the sonar yeah. and everything <laughs> <laughs> Wham, wham. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so really, we we do have um, a small fight with Luffy versus Magellan, but it's not very conclusive. Uh, Luffy's basically just like strong enough to hold Magellan back with the help of Mister um, Mister Three, but Luffy does not defeat Magellan here. No, he just kind of escapes. Mm-hmm. Yep, he runs away essentially, which valid. Yeah, <laughs> the victory they needed. Yeah, I just think it's interesting that we do have this opponent that Luffy was outmatched by. Indeed. But we are out of Impel Down. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, literally, like phys- physically out of Impel Down. Yeah. For the first time in a long time. <laughs> And it's pretty it's pretty wild to think of like the husk that that prison now is after uh Luffy did the business. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not his finest day. <laughs> Does anyone have any ideas as to why this chapter is called Island Ripper? Nope. That's a good question. Huh. Numbers hmm. seven. I wonder if it's like a weird translation thing. Is that the kind of like term that I'm just not familiar with? Oh, I thought you knew the answer and you were testing us. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm too. generally curious. <laughs> I was looking forward to a cool answer. I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like a term. Yeah, I, I don't, I legitimately don't know why it's called Island Ripper. Apparently, the fan translation for this one was just escaping the island. So I don't know how. Oh. I yeah, got it. Nope. Oh. It's, it's Mr. One going Beyblade. He's letting it rip. Oh. <laughs> it's all coming together. Oh, no. It's got to be it. <laughs> God damn. Okay. I, I apologize, everyone. No. That was, that was <laughs> uncalled for. No, that was great. That was lovely. You <laughs> let it rip. Okay, so uh, on that, do you guys have any other final thoughts of the the chapter before we move on? Okay. Uh, Moving on to the next limited cover series, number 13, Frankie's I'm No Good This Week, Volume 1, Free Roaming Cyborg Animals. Frankie runs from a group of weaponized beasts. Yeah. Yeah, he's going for it, man. (laughs) Uh, I do love the the title of his cover story, though. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Poor guy. There's like a snake shooting like a laser beam out of his mouth. The gorilla has like uh, Cyclops uh, goggles and like a mohawk. And they're all numbered. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Reminiscent of the battle. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, that's all we got for right now. So let's get into chapter 548. Thank you. The now free prisoners rejoice as whale sharks safely deliver them to the Navy ship GMB's group com- commandeered. The other ships in the Navy fleet fire on the pirates, but Luffy and the others are able to hold off the cannonballs. Unfortunately, the pirates have no way of getting through the gates of justice. Suddenly, the gates begin to open. In the control room, Magellan gave the order to open the gates, to the confusion of his subordinates. To make matters even more confusing, another Magellan runs into the room in a panic, <laughs> asking why the gates are being opened. Turns out, Bon Clay stayed behind and took on the form of Magellan to allow the others to escape. Luffy shouts at Jinbei that they can't leave Bon Clay behind, but Jinbei explains that this was the only way Bon Clay offered to do it. Bon Clay had requested to not tell Luffy about this until after the Transfinder Snail was disconnected. But Jinbei left the connection open anyway to allow Luffy the opportunity to thank Bon Clay for what he did. The others all thank Bon as well. Before the connection is cut, Bon Clay, with tears in his eyes, tells Luffy to go save his brother. The gates of justice close behind them, severing the call. Oh, man. What a lovely human being. Yeah. Thank you, Bon. Thank you, Bon. Thank you, Bon. <laughs> Thank, you, bon. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Bon. <laughs> bon, bon. <sighs> yeah, this is a beautiful 
heartbreaking sacrifice from Bond. Yeah. Especially after all of the, after all we've been through this arc <laughs> of uh, Luffy and Bond bonding again. Yeah, it really is like the culmination of like the their friendship in the arc. It feels. Yeah. Like that. This is what it was really building towards, and for Bond Clay to make that sacrifice, like you said, I think I think it's a beautiful uh, sentiment. Yeah. I feel like that's also kind of been a theme throughout this arc, kind of like the sacrifice, like people um, making sacrifices in order for Luffy to reach his goal, which has become everyone's goal. Um, but it's kind of hard to watch because I think every step of the way, Luffy has resisted anyone trying to sacrifice themselves for his cause because he doesn't want to mm -hmm. lose anybody, you know? Right. He doesn't want to lose anybody. That's why he's on this quest in the first place because he doesn't, doesn't want to lose Ace. Um, so there's kind of that, uh, conflict within himself of, right. you know, trying to get his mission accomplished, but also not trying to lose anyone along the way. So this is a heartbreaking moment because there's no, there's no turning back for Bond at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah, Sean, did you have uh, thoughts on that? Um, nothing tremendous. It's just, uh, a testament to bond clay's character um it's and it's just a very very like it's just it's the most satisfying thing to just to like how we like to to, to trick Magell in this way is more dangerous to him than than anything like it's just he's never been wounded this this way before and in, in, or in a very since the last one like what was the last prisoner escape like to, to do it this way of all ways to trick them this way is just so bond wins as much as he loses here like mm -hmm. in the sense that like this is, this is the ultimate defeat of magellan like he is fucked now <laughs> he's just so you? daring throughout it Larry's spinning. Ah, I tricked you as the uh, gel <laughs> figures him out. <laughs> and just that last panel of him squaring up and saying satisfaction is just so wonderful. Yeah. So good. You're still fighting. Yeah, and to what Evan was saying earlier, um, yeah, th this also shows that there are other people besides Ace that Luffy cares about in the situation. So like Luffy legitimately cares about like Bon Clay here. You, know, you care about, um, you know, like Jean Bay, um, you know, Bankov. Like these are people he cared about. Like he he didn't want to sacrifice them along the way. Um, so it's not all about like saving Ace at the expense of everybody else. Uh, but Luffy wants to be able to, you know, have all of his friends you know, be saved. Um, but yeah, so you know, Bankov does make the, the selfless act to you know, stay behind, realizing that this was the only way to to do so. Um, but yeah, he does it in such a bond way that you know he, he pretty much was like the only one that could really do this too. So it, I think it is fitting mm -hmm. that you know he, he was able to use his powers in this way to infiltrate the the control room and you know make this happen. So I think that's also important to note. But yeah, I think Bon Clay is the uh, the MVP of Impel Down, in my opinion. Hundred percent agreed. I am also loving the dynamic that. Luffy and Jinbei are developing as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that he, like, he very much understands where Luffy is coming from and all of his impulsivity and all of his sentiments, but is just able to give him that little reality check, that little bit of perspective he needs to not fully uh, go off the rails and undo everything he's trying to trying to fight for or uh, or lose out on it. I should say um, it's that that function that his crew had. And, uh, he's been he's been missing as of late, so it's nice that he has that mm -hmm. in Jimmy. Yeah, I think that's also um, a good point because he he serves as like a voice of reason for Luffy in a way that mm -hmm. like Luffy actually listens to him. Whereas a lot of people that try to reason with Luffy like don't really get through to him, but he seems to have like a way about like speaking to Luffy that like he makes Luffy understand like what's important. And to to stay focused, and I think it's like a very hard thing to do for Luffy, who is very much set on doing what he wants to do, and it doesn't like there's a lot a lot of things that like just don't stop him. But I think uh, Jean Bay's reasoning, uh, like he he's trying to help Luffy, 
So he's not trying to get in the way of Luffy's goals. He's trying to um, like help him guide, guide him in a way that will be more beneficial to him to go about it in a more wise way. So I think it is an interesting dynamic mm-hmm. that they're developing here. But he also um, has like this. Um, he, he makes this decision to facilitate the the phone call between Luffy and Bon Clay. Mm-hmm. So again, Luffy um, gets this moment with Bon Clay because GBA decides to disregard Bon Clay's request. Like Bon Clay wanted to have like um, you know no goodbyes, make it easier. Saying goodbye would be hard. But Jinbei also has like a moment where he, I think he just thinks that this is actually better for them. So he makes a decision not to like go like back on Bon Clay, but in order to actually give him you know, the respect he deserves. I think it's like, it's a very interesting uh, personality thing that I think he does here, that he makes that decision to facilitate that. Yeah, that's a great point. Mm-hmm. I just like him. I just think he's neat. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good dude. <laughs> yeah. But like it's, it's it's really cool because like as they're going to the gates of justice, Jimmy has like that level head about him. He's not really saying anything, and everybody else is like, "Oh, what's going on? The gates are opening! Like this is great." But Jimmy knows what's going on, but he's like keeping like cool about it. He's not really explaining. He's like, "Oh, don't I got this, guys?" He's just like, you know, full steam ahead. So yeah, he's a cool operator. Mm. Yeah, so I think this is just a, a great chapter overall and very emotional and um yeah i i think it's a, a nice send off for impel down um and for the the chapter that has been luffy's friendship with bon clay yeah absolutely i love this like poetic um text we get around bon clay's battle with magellan saying uh the o come my way um mm. yeah it seems like a, a, a fitting uh into this chapter. Yeah, so it says here, the flower of friendship can bloom even in hell. Now the petals of that flower will be scattered upon the rolling bosom of the sea. One day I will make that flower bloom again. Oh, come my way. So to Bon Clay. Beautiful. Bars. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other thoughts? All right, let's move on. Frankie's I'm No Good This Week, final volume, The House Where Vegapunk Was Born. Frankie ends up at a boarded-up laboratory that has been abandoned by Vegapunk. Another mention of the mysterious Vegapunk. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That name sounds familiar. (laughs) Yeah. It's got to be the the most name-dropped person in all of One Piece so far. (laughs) He's up there. Mm -hmm. Could be. For like for how recently he was introduced, it has been happening a lot. Yeah, a lot. And it's interesting that Frankie ended up here. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so very curious. Hmm. But yeah, that's where we uh, leave Frankie for now. Okay, but moving on to uh, the the final chapter uh, to cover Impel Down, Chapter Five Hundred Forty Nine Battleship. At Impel Down, Shiryu administered the antidote to Blackbeard's crew, saving them from Magellan's poisons. They decide to team up. As the escaped prisoners wallow in sadness for leaving Bon Clay behind, Buggy decides and said they should celebrate. Luffy is glad to have Jinbei as an ally, unaware of his past ties to Arlong, which he now regrets. Jinbei says he's glad to help, though his status as a warlord is likely revoked. Luffy and Buggy are shocked to learn that he is a warlord. Buggy and the other pirates are also shocked to learn that with the newfound freedom, they're heading to Navy headquarters to fight in the war. They get a call on the ship's transponder snail from the Navy. Luffy and Buggy had been identified as the leaders. The Navy was able to search into Buggy's history, revealing to the others that he was a former member on Gold Roger's crew and had a blood brother in Emperor Red-Haired Shanks, so they would not underestimate him again. They give the pirates a chance to surrender, but Luffy declares they will save Ace. Buggy's new underlings are amazed by his history and offer to help Buggy take over the ship. But Buggy starts to think that this is a good opportunity for him to make a name for himself by killing Whitebeard and becoming one of the four emperors. He convinces his followers to join him to claim glory, which they are now eager to do. Ace is brought out at Marineford, 
with only three hours remaining until his execution. Buggy continues to fail upward. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so buggy. <laughs> yeah. So you guys want to start with Buggy on this one? Sure. Y- y- you almost forget, like, I don't, I almost wonder if, like, I don't. I ultimately don't think so. I think this was because I really do believe Oda planned like 98% of this just way in the past. But <laughs> in retrospect, I almost wonder some part of me is like, did he not realize the magnitude of putting Buggy in on Gold Rogers crew and how, <laughs> how insane that would be like uh, 500 chapters later of just like, yeah, he was on Gold Rogers crew. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, we don't know much about now we're learning more about who just how how insanely crazy gold rogers story is and then you got goofy mcgee over here just like i was there the whole time it's like like, wow it's like if like alexander the great also had just like a jester who occasionally walked around with him was like yeah i I saw all the stuff happen He wasn't there for like Gold Roger finding the One Piece. I don't believe is yeah no, but but he was there for a portion of this famous thing. Is like yeah, yeah. So he, he was at least on the crew at some point. With, at some uh, point, which is still yeah. it's certainly a hell of an accomplishment. So yeah, and now by association, Shanks has also earned a name yeah. for himself as one of the strongest pirates in the world, and Buggy is an associate of his in that way. So it just makes Buggy seem even more like impressive <laughs> by like the people that he knows <laughs> yeah. So, yeah it's just funny that the um the navy is now like because of his his uh history they're now being like okay buggy you're a threat we're not gonna estimate you anymore when he was <laughs> just like a no-name pirate to them like two chapters well, not chapters but like two volumes ago like oh who's who's that mark on that ship do we know that guy i uh, probably nobody <laughs> important <laughs> Just put him in level one. <laughs> of course, this, along with his natural charisma, are helping him uh, gain even more favor with all these escaped prisoners. <laughs> and I, there's, and I forgot to mention uh, last chapter. There's literally a part where he even overshadows Crocodile. Or Crocodile's like, okay, don't just evade their cannons. This is a warship. Return their fire. And Buggy's like, hey, wait a minute. I have an idea. Return their fire. Oh, oh yeah. Buggy. So <laughs> Good idea. He's so smart. <laughs> and it's oh my god, it's just every time he opens his stupid mouth, it's comedic gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great moment. Yeah, so it's kind of like working out in Buggy's favor that he let some of these prisoners out as like a distraction to let him escape. That that was his intention. He was trying to like actually help these people, but they mistook it as like him wanting to, you know help them and be like yeah you're not gonna be like under under my crew like so you just kind of gain these followers like inadvertently <laughs> are you trying to say i kind of failing up <laughs> yeah fake it till you make it <laughs> yeah and buggy now also has uh lofty goals here um so he thinks he can you know be a big player in this in this war and use this to his advantage to uh to gain notoriety and uh, fame. I mean, at this rate, he just might do it. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like, there's nothing I can't like at this point. <laughs> sure, he's escaped Impel Down. He's escaped Logue Town. He's escaped everything. Like, <laughs> sure, fine. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't escape Logue Town. He was arrested at Logue Town and then tossed in. But yeah, but you know what I mean. He somehow no, made he, it alive. He did, this whole yeah, time. he did escape uh, Logue Town. He did. Okay. How did? Yep. When did they catch him? Then I, it was. Uh, was yeah. So Dragon, there. Dragon actually did uh, get him free from Smoker. Uh, I actually did just watch this um, a few days ago too. Um, yeah. So Dragon, uh, when he helped Luffy with his his. Um, whatever like he, yeah so he, he basically yeah. uh made uh buggy get out of the net and you know they we had the moment too where he met like ace before but I, th- I think they literally just got captured um not that long ago because the buggy pirate wow. ship was nearby so i think he got captured not that long ago amazing amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we have uh this great interaction with luffy and the navy so luffy's just like he answers the phone He's like, oh, this is Luffy. 
<laughs> they give him a chance to surrender. He's like, no, we're going to go. We're going to go save Ace. Like, you're not stopping us. <laughs> Hi, this is the Unabomber. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to tell him that. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> If Luffy ever had to come up with an alias, what do you think he would call himself? Pirate King. Yeah, he just Eat wouldn't. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to stick with it, even if he got a good one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Luffy says, I'm going to save Ace. Just watch. It'll be easy as potatoes. <laughs> and they're like, don't you mean pie, Straw Hat? <laughs> You can move for baked potatoes or something? It's been a long day. Long day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we kind of go back to like Buggy's like um, legendary sass, too. Like uh, Luffy and Buggy start talking, and um, like uh, Luffy mentions Rayleigh. And then uh, Buggy, oh, yeah. oh, you met Rayleigh? oh, that old, that old <laughs> sea dog. <laughs> yeah, talk about the dark kids. So it's like Buggy's like um, status is now just like become even more like, <laughs> like wow, he's like a legend. <laughs> um, did you guys find it confusing how Luffy was confused that Jinbei was a warlord? Because wasn't there a moment before where he was surprised that he learned that he was a warlord? Because I feel like when they first let him out. Um, I thought Luffy asked, like, Warlord, like, who, like, who's the other Warlord? When um, they let Crocodile and Jimmy out, they're like, oh, now we have two war Warlords on our side. Well, did he ever get an answer? I don't think it resolved. Yeah, I don't know if it was resolved then. Hmm, okay. I, I don't remember. Because I, uh, I, I thought that came up, I, I guess, if yeah. they didn't answer. I think he asked the question, but I don't know if it was answered. <laughs> Which to me makes it even funnier. <laughs> he never put it together after all that time, I guess. <laughs> Jumping back real quick to the beginning of the chapter, we see Blackbeard alive. Mm. Um, so that happened, not yeah. defeated by Magellan, um, and has gained a powerful ally. Um, which kind of goes back to what I was I was saying uh, last podcast, where. I feel like Blackbeard is is very intentional about building his crew. It, kind of similar to Luffy in that sense, where it's it's not about numbers; it's about like quality over quantity here. Yeah, um, and he's like fine picking who he wants to be on his crew because this seems to be the objective of him breaking into the prison outside, or, or part, or like maybe just like a a side mission. Yeah, actually, that's a good point because, um, yeah, we didn't know exactly why he did go back to Impel Down. He never outright said what the reason was. Right. Like he mentioned his qualms with, with Luffy, but. Um, yeah, he didn't seem too interested in Luffy to have anymore. this whole stage thing. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't need any more Straw Hat. Like your brother kind of took your place. So like, like you're. Not really that important to me, but if you want to fight, I'll I'll take you on. But yeah, he didn't go there specifically for Luffy. So yeah, I think that's that's an interesting point that you bring up here. Uh yeah, so Shiryu had uh given the antidote to the Blackbeard Pirates, so they recovered pretty quickly. I guess that's some good antidote. Um because now they're completely Must fine. <laughs> uh so yeah, Ivan Cup does seem to have recovered uh more quickly than Inazuma. Um so Inazuma is in bed resting, but we do have this hilarious like panel where Ivankov's like faces through the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that point I was like, oh, okay, no, we are. This this does make sense. Yeah, so he does explain that um, I blast away the poison inside me with my healing hormone and energy hormone. Those techniques shorten the patient's life and leave lasting effects. It's better to let them recuperate at a slower pace. Once life gets shortened, those lost years are gone for good. So yeah, that that's the explanation. But yeah, it just seems like Ivankov. Um, it, it probably is more effective on Ivankov than Inazuma. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So then uh, we end the chapter where uh, Ace starts his uh, walk up to um, the steps at uh, Marineford.
Beautiful lighting on that last page. Yeah. Tick tock goes the clock. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you guys get to move on, or any other yeah. closing thoughts? I love how we see Ace reflecting on Luffy here in kind of like, you know, he's kind of being faced with his fate and he's thinking about his little brother. Yeah. Which we haven't gotten a whole lot of that. So it's kind of cool seeing some, uh, some flashbacks there. Yeah. See how, how they go way back when they were kids. <sighs> how the times have changed. <laughs> okay, let's um let's move on to the next cover story. I'm gonna cover series number 14, Usopp's I'll Die If I'm Alone Disease, Volume 1. Bowen Island is a forest of gluttony. Usopp enjoys a feast with Heracles. Usopp doing Usopp things. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Seems to be having a good time. You know, if I saw a waterfall just made of noodles, I I can't say I'd do <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah. I love Heracles, so any <laughs> any more of him is always a good thing. Yeah. He's it's Usap Un, right? Everything's yeah, Usap Un. Yeah. Yeah. Usap Un. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this almost kinda of like Willy Wonka over here. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like anything you see is edible. <laughs> okay, going into the chapter. Chapter 550, Navy Headquarters. Tension is high around the world as the people wait for Ace's execution to begin, uncertain how the war will go. The people of Marineford have been evacuated to Sabo Odi Archipelago for safety, but are able to watch the execution from monitors. The Navy forces gather, including the remaining members of the seven warlords and the three Navy admirals, though there has been no updates on Whitebeard's whereabouts. Luffy's group arrive at the Gates of Justice outside the Navy headquarters, but don't have a way to open them. Garp and Sengoku arrive and walk up to Ace on the execution stand. Sengoku uses a transponder snail and transmits his conversation with Ace for the world to hear. He asks Ace to declare his father's name, to which he replies, Whitebeard. Sengoku says this is false. He explains his mother, Porcus D. Rouge, did the impossible by holding Ace in her womb for 20 months. This was done to prevent the world from figuring out that Ace was the son of Gold Roger, the Pirate King. Evan! Evan! <laughs> Evan! Evan! <laughs> did I call that? I think I called that. Did I don't you? Think you did. You <laughs> I don't think he did. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> you were literally talking about Dragon being his dad like a week or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm glad. I'm I'm so glad that uh that you know we are like so before um we got to this point, because like there was a conversation with Garp and Ace in the prison cell. Uh, I told uh Cody and Sean separately to be very careful not to give too much away. Because yeah. if you mentioned Dragon being his dad, I don't want you to pick up on anything. So right. I, I, I try to make it very clear that like, yeah, we're trying not to say too much. Yep. So with that being said, I mean, with the D, fun. with, with, with the D, it's something that we've, I feel like discussed since. Oh, wait, 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 way back. You know, them having the D in their name and us talking about that being a family name and being like a family connection. So I can't say I was entirely shocked here. But really? okay. it is a huge, it is a huge reveal, obviously, like the ramifications of this information is, is huge. Um, and this whole, this whole chapter is just like, is table setting like we have never seen before. This like, is a this banquet is, table setting. Yes, <laughs> this is the table setting of table settings. Like <laughs> we, we see the global impact of this event, how it's, it's reaching literally every corner of the world. Um, and we see Navy headquarters decked out. We see the warlords of the sea all together in one place. We see the three admirals sitting side by side in the same room. 
and it's like the stakes could not be higher. And then of course this information is released here with all eyes on ACE um, and saying like the, the bloodline of gold D Roger is still alive. There's a living bloodline, which is mind blowing. Yeah. And uh, just to point something out. So with the name of D, we actually don't know what that means because it doesn't necessarily mean that they're related. Mm -hmm. Because now we're seeing uh, a specific example that uh, Luffy and Ace don't have the same right, problem. Luffy and, yeah, not technically blood brothers. Yeah, so um, I got, we, I got, again, I was trying to be cautious not to say too much um, about the D and like their relation because, you know, we know this information going in. So uh, like we're trying to be cautious, uh, but this does make it a little bit more complicated because we don't know what the name of D actually means. Why do they have this name D? Mm -hmm. um, it, it was passed from Gold Roger to Ace because, you know, they are, they are directly related. But we don't know what that means for everybody else. We know right. a dra Dragon and Garp also passed down D you know, to Luffy, but they're not actually really by blood we did have and we did the one line from saul in the ohara flashback saying oh yeah everyone has oh, in my family has this letter hmm. but none of us know what it means <laughs> no one knows what it stands for it's just a thing that we just keep passing down so that's like yeah, that's so big, interesting big we've had. and teach also is a d teach. Mm -hmm. so, and there have been yeah. clear similarities <laughs> between all of the characters we've met with a d in their name so th there is something that connects them, but we don't know what that connection is. We don't know. Right. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, I, um, going back to the previous conversations that Ace and Garp were having. Uh, so it was written in a way that if you know the truth, or if you don't know the truth, um, you can still read the conversation and like your takeaway is going to be different. So um, there's nothing contradictory about what was said. But it was just like vague enough to the point where it works in both contexts. So if you're under the impression that Dragon is Ace's uh, dad too, then like when you read that conversation, you don't think uh, like anything that crazy about it. Because yeah. Ace just says like, oh yeah, I have, uh, you know, like this criminal, like world famous criminal like blood in my body. But like I reject my my father. You now Whitebeard is my father. So now we say see him saying the same thing here. So Ace knows who his, his father is, but he, well, you know, by, by blood, but he accepts Whitebeard as his actual father because he's been a, such a father figure to him in his life that he just sees him as his real father. Makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Never, never knew gold. Yeah. Oh, so there's a lot of weird <laughs> shit in one piece that doesn't make a lot of real scientific sense. Um, this is definitely one of them. Yeah, you don't just keep a baby in your body for twenty months. Like you, know, I just, I just <laughs> it's like there's no suggestion that there's any magic done here. I mean, maybe there was, or like some magic spell. It was just like she just said, "No, you're not coming out yet. You're not coming out for another twenty months." Like go to your room. Uh, just uh, near my duodenum or something. Like I don't like. It's just. Yeah, okay, Oda. You just kept it in there for 20 months. <laughs> she just had that will. And, and like, I, I, at yeah. least it was like, okay, that killed her. It's like, but still, like, I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah, it is one of those things in, in the series. Um, <laughs> you just have to like, <laughs> No, like, I, I was going to say, like, yeah, like, it is like a thing where it's like, yeah, that is a little far fetched, where it's like, you know, with, um, you know, the Zeph and Sanji thing, where it's like, how long they survive without eating food. Uh, it's technically possible. Uh, you know, it's maybe pushing the limits, but it's possible. Um, this, I actually looked up, I think like the longest somebody went without um, actually giving birth was like a year. Um, I, I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, there have been longer pregnancies than, than nine months, but like two years, like years. almost two years is like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> even for the series, but um, my, my thing is, I wonder if it's like something tied to, you know, the will of D being something special where like, it, like 
because C- Cody kind of mentioned it where it's like it was like a willpower thing where she willed it because of maybe this special quality that they might have. Um, I don't know. But like Sengoku himself also says that she did the impossible. So they also acknowledge that this is something that this should be impossible. Incredibly weird. Yeah. So. Uh, because like they ruled out that, you know, it, this could have been Roger's kid because of how long like after he was born. But yeah, it, it is it is a stretch. It's one of those things that's like, okay, sure, but <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> they do say your mother used a trick to hide you. So I don't know, maybe there was think, something I more. I think it's just referring to the trick being this fact that I tricked them by keeping them in my womb for this long. Yeah. But, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, but I, I get what you mean, like maybe it's some kind of secret magic spell, but I don't think so, but it's just, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Sean said, though, like it is what killed her. Like yeah. she couldn't survive. Right. Right. This, like, this didn't. This didn't yeah. not have repercussions. It's certainly yeah. Good. Right. So she like pushed her body to the limit to to do this, and you know paid a toll on her. Uh, but it seems like the Navy wasn't above killing innocent children just because they might have been Roger's kid. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it kind of says a lot about the the Navy. Yeah. We finally see Sakazuki. Yes, yeah, so uh... <laughs> now see all three admirals, all seven yeah. warlords. This world is is just getting fuller and fuller, and we're getting the the full picture bit by bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't seen Sakazuki in the present, so this is the first time we've actually seen him in the present day because right. we only saw him in the um, horror flashback. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, um, I love the um, the page before we see the admirals. Um, we see the seven warlords, and this is the Don card that they used for the newest set. Mm-hmm. So it looks pretty sick. The seven warlord spread. Nice, nice. nice. I was so blown away by uh, how tall Do Flamingo looks. <laughs> <laughs> then there's also the question: Oh, is this just like a perspective shot where, like, just because the way that uh, the two marines are framed and the distance between them? Uh, but it's ambiguous. But they're also just so larger than life. But I was like, that is a tall man. That is a big boy. Yeah, Doflamingo is that tall. <laughs> <laughs> and more is crouching down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, One Piece has streaming technology. Sure. Oh, yeah. They, I guess so. they, have, they have season TV feeds. They can just stream to Sabadee. That's pretty sick. <laughs> well, we did see the monitors in Impel Down. But that was more of like a close range thing. This is, uh, you know, streaming... You know, quite a distance. This is live news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just think like it's really cool seeing like all the forces begin to gather. Yeah, you know, we see like the like the navy members, like we see like some of the vice admirals showing up here. Even giving us a little uh description of what the rest of the island is used for, the fact that it's all these uh marine family homes who've been evacuated mm. to Sabadi and then Yeah. Uh, going over the artillery that the Marines have, everything at their disposal, it's it's a nice, efficient way to set the stage for this. Yeah, and it's also, I think it's also a nice detail that they relay that they evacuated the, the civilians so they're not caught up in this war. Mm-hmm. Because like they're fully expecting a war. I think it'd be like very irresponsible if they just let the war happen like in their town and be like, oh, like all these families are now going to be like caught up in the you know the crossfire. Uh, so I, I do like how they have this explanation to say, oh, yeah, everybody's been evacuated. So you don't have to worry about like the innocent people just getting caught up in, in like in this war. Mm-hmm. And we even have the um, uh, the little um, in those cutaways to the rest of the world in the Grand Line. We have like the children singing a jump rope song about basically Whitebeard being the devil. It's like the stage for just the world's opinion of this war. Yeah. And the expectations they have for it. Which I thought was also just really nice. Yeah, it is a nice little snapshot of showing these different islands and like the regular people and their perceptions. Because everybody has like different opinions and some people are like um like some people are concerned, some people are, like um you know excited, some people are like um they don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, so there's a lot of like talk going on about what's like about to unfold. So it's just nice seeing the average citizen's perspective. 
in this world. I'm also, I feel like that um, this first shot we get of Ace um, bent on his knees, crouched behind two cross swords, it feels very reminiscent of a uh, Goldie Rogers execution. Yeah. Visually. Mm-hmm. It's a nice connection. Especially with the reveal at the end of this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> it ties it together. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, at the end, we have this little dialogue um, where Roger asked Garp to uh, take care of his son. Like he's innocent. So he's like, no matter what I did, my son didn't do anything wrong by being born into this world. So he, he's asking Garp to take care of his kid. So why is Gold Roger asking a Navy man to protect his son when the Navy is who is looking for his kid? Uh, yeah. So, uh, pretty exciting reveals here. But are you guys good to move on to the last chapter of the episode and the volume? Let's do it. Good to move on. Okay. So we are wrapping up Usopp's cover story. Usopp's I'll Die If I'm Alone Disease, final volume. Fat Usopp. Usopp has put on a few pounds. <laughs> hey, good for him. Like, let it out. You know. Need some good yeah. food. <laughs> good for him. I love Hercules <laughs> just like, oh, dear. <laughs> I looked away for one second. What happened? <laughs> Luffy has never been more jealous of Usopp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> okay, let's uh, wrap this one up. Chapter 551, Whitebeard of the Four Emperors. The world is shocked to learn that Roger's son is still alive. Hancock and Kobe are surprised that Ace and Luffy aren't brothers by blood. In the past, before Roger's execution, he asked Garp to look after his son as he'll be dead soon. After Ace's birth, Rouge did not survive, though she managed to hold on long enough to avoid suspicion from the Navy. As kids, Garp dropped Luffy and Ace off to be raised by Dadan. As Ace made a name for himself as a captain of the Spade Pirates, the Navy looked into his past and covered his lineage. Sengoku tells Ace Whitebeard took him in with the intention of making him the next Pirate King, though Ace is adamant that he only wanted to make Whitebeard the Pirate King. Sengoku declares that due to Ace's bloodline and potential, he must be executed here today. Suddenly, word gets out that the gates of justice began to open. The ships under Whitebeard's fleet began to swarm around the outer rank of Marineford, but the flagship has not appeared yet. Bubbles begin to form in the center of the ring, and shadows begin to rise. The Navy realizes Whitebeard must have coded his ships as they begin to emerge, including the Moby Dick. Whitebeard emerges stating he is here for his son. <sighs> what an entrance. <laughs> wide beard, wide beard. Wide beard. <laughs> yeah, you so know, that's on that one. Do you guys We're know the um, video, meme video of that guy talking about, I don't know if it's Tom Brady or something else, but he's, it's like, that's why he's not the MVP. That's why he doesn't go. <laughs> that's, that's me whenever like white bird appears and stuff. Like that. Let's go. Oh man. Yeah, what an entrance. Man, there's really not much to say about this chapter except let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got quite a bit to say, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you guys a chance first. <laughs> a I mean, of I don't, I don't know if I should say this yet or wait until the, it's not a spoiler, but it's my feelings on the arc known as Marine Ford. Uh, if you want to give like, um, like a little taste of, I don't know if this, is, this, this is a pretty big juicy slice in the sense Ooh. of what I want, so I don't think I should say it. It's not a spoiler. It's nothing, nothing. That, it's not. A, I'm not talking about anything that occurs in the arc just what the arc is to me but we'll get there no i think we'll get this is um i'm looking forward to this to covering this arc with you all. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say likewise <laughs> hype. Hype. that's that's I'm what I'm can't wait 
yeah, so I, I do think this is um a, a pretty hype way to get things rolling here. Yeah. Um, you know, let me put it this way. There was a while back where I was like, I might take a break from the podcast for a bit because I was just kind of in my own head. And it was I was like, I, I might take a, break, a couple months off. And I said to myself, I will come back from Marineford. <laughs> so that let me just tell you that like I will come back from Marine. <laughs> yeah, so things are just getting started, and um, you know we we've been kind of talking about this for a while, but Impel Down has been building towards this war. Um, so this is just the kickoff, and like Whitebeard's entrance, I think, really kind of sets the stage because we've been having like these rumblings of like. Where's Whitebeard? Like the Navy has been talking for a while about how they lost sight of him. They had no like surveillance of him. They they have like no idea where he was. So their intelligence was failing them when it came to Whitebeard. But now we have a good sense of why they couldn't keep track of him because they were literally underwater because their ships were coded. Uh so no. um not to say too much, but um like this is the technique that Rayleigh does for the ship. So this is what he was trying to do for the Straw Hats. So now we're seeing what a coded ship actually does and why they can go like presumably to Fishman Island is when they coat the ships, it allows them to go into water. So that's what Whitebeard's crew did. They did that in advance in preparation for, for this moment so they can basically bypass all the Navy and just sneak in right into the heart of like the, like, the Navy HQ to Go right to where Ace is. Center stage. <laughs> uh, Cody, how about you? Um, I think that, uh, honestly, chapter one starts with some beautiful panels. Um, the zoom in to Marineford, followed by just the white background as everyone looks up to the execution platform was such a great sell to just... Mm really hit the the severity of this moment of this revelation um and i also love just this this slight flashback with garp and roger um we haven't really had a chance to see roger um actually in a conversation yet we've seen him in the very first page of the manga um with the call to action to find the one piece we've gotten little glimpses people have spoken about him we've gotten his message on the poneglyph but and he's just the one man who's like, save my kid. He's kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. It reminds me of somebody. But he's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of making sense why, uh, why Garp agreed to this. Because there, there does seem to be, uh, either a similarity or, um, uh, maybe some of Roger's attitude rubbed off on Garp over the years. Um, because Garp is considerably, considerably more serious. Uh, than he tends to be in this flashback right here. Um, but I, lo I love the dynamic between these two. Um, and getting from Garth's perspective and seeing uh, his reaction to Ace's birth and Rouge's death also uh, also hits pretty hard. Yeah. There's also like a sense of seems like they have some kind of like respect for each other in a way. Yeah. Uh, so what Roger says is we've been fighting each other for years. I trust you as much as any of my shipmates. So that's like, that says a lot. Um, like he's technically his enemy, but he's like, like, I know like your nature. Like, I know like what kind of person you are. Like, I know you're going to take care of my kid. So it's like, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> no, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's like, if, if there's a person who, if, like, if Luffy's relationship with Kobe and his history with Smoker feels like the relationship that Roger and Garp have. Hmm. Relentlessly pursuing him, always, um, always one step close to bringing him in, and then this, like you said, this respect for each other, and this, it seems genuine care uh, yeah. in certain situations. At the risk of, once again, uh, shoving the live action discussion into the podcast, this also is uh, referenced in somewhat in the opening of the live action where he's like, Garp talks to uh, Roger, who mm. and Garp is not there in the original series, 
Right. And but uh and this he 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 leans into him and is like, I warned you, I warned you this would happen. Like that's not something you say to just some monster you hate. Like so yeah. yeah. That's a good point because um that that's something they, they seem to have kind of like maybe planted some seeds a little earlier. Uh to kind of like show that there is some kind of like history with them here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get some other reactions. Uh, you know, Kobe and Helmeppo are here as well. And they seem surprised at this news that uh, Luffy and Ace aren't actually related. <laughs> and then, like, also, um, like, even, like, the very beginning of the, the chapter, I also liked how like, there is, like, that, like, kind of silence as everybody's just, like, processing what's happening. There's a dude uh, who's probably like, a reporter like he has like like his like little notebook and he, like he drops his book <laughs> and he's like it still exists the borderline of the pirate king so it's like there is this kind of sense of like awe like it might be like a little bit of fear and like curiosity that like there's something about this bloodline that inherently makes ace seem scarier than maybe he he really is um i think it's more because like you know roger's been kind of like demonized by the navy um but yeah, I, th- I think it's just like interesting to see like this general reaction to this news around the world. Yeah, I mean, we saw the impact it had on fellow pirates with Buggy, with Buggy's information being released and his association with Gold yeah. Roger just last chapter. <laughs> yeah. And now we're seeing that effect on like the world at large and like how it's affecting um, reporters, everyday people, the government, pirates, warlords, admirals, you know. Yeah. And then we also learn here that, um, you know, Ace didn't take on his father's name. So he, he went by Porcus Diaz, uh, which is his mother's name, Porcus de Rouge. So he, he didn't take on Roger's name. So you come in gold, Diaz. <laughs> Porcus Diaz sounds cooler. Gold Diaz yeah. sounds a bit. It's like, you're, <laughs> all right, calm down. That's a snowflake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Goldie Ace. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Garb just dumps Ace and Luffy with, with this person. It says, like, you're going to raise them. <laughs> what are you serious? So this is how Luffy and Ace bag. They basically just got dumped together um, at daycare. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Dan? <laughs> or Dadden? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Only Oda knows. <laughs> also, more interesting so, information. You're trying to say right. dragon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, also, um, we find out that Ace was a, f- a former captain of the Spade Pirates. So he was a yeah. captain himself, which um, I haven't read the the A story yet, but there was a series of two novels that goes over uh, Ace's time as the captain of the Spade Pirates. Cody, have you read this before? I so I haven't read the novels. I read the uh, manga adaptation by Boichi of Doctor Stone. It doesn't cover okay. it doesn't cover everything because I know there's like some Ace having runs with the Marines and stuff like that. Um, but it does cover uh, the formation of his crew uh, and him meeting Whitebeard and joining the crew, and uh, I, it's very well done. Okay, that, that, the part I have read, it's it's a wonderful story. Okay, so did you you read uh, part one, or did you read both parts? It, it was so so. I don't. It didn't tell me which. It was like a four chapter manga adaptation of the novel. Uh, so it didn't say. So I think they like they took like, all the white beard centric parts and like the very, very origin and put them together. I assume it's like some from part one, some from part two. Okay. Cause like there's, um, there's two volumes of the Boji version. So I bought both. Oh, I didn't know that both... had two volumes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I bought both novels and both, uh, Boichi manga version. So I haven't read them yet, but I don't know. Uh, so I'll, I'll, essentially what I'm trying to say is um if you guys are interested we can cover it on the podcast, but I don't know if there's any spoiler information in there. So I think uh I'd have to read it first to see. But if you guys are interested there is um 
basically there's the, the manga adaptation. If you want to discover the manga adaptation, um, we can do that. But I'll probably read both versions is just this, to kind of compare. Is this considered sort of like old? Well, who wrote this? Um, so it wasn't written by Oda. Yeah, I didn't. So, but but it is. Is it is, is it a canon. stamp of approval? It is considered canon. Yeah, it's considered canon. Yeah, it's not. It's not like movie. old old school Lucasfilm Legends canon or something. Right. Like right. Space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It it was released um to be in canon with One Piece. Okay. But the manga adaptation part two actually just came out very recently. Oh. Um, but the story's been out for a few years now, like the the novel versions. But I haven't read either. I but I I bought them, but I'll I'll go through. And see if um, there's any like spoilers that would prevent us from reading it, um, you know, for for the podcast right now. But I'll get back to you guys on that. But I just wanted to make you guys aware that it was a thing. Yep. So if you guys are interested, we can maybe cover that too. That would be very fun. Hmm? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's something I haven't read myself, so it'd be new new for me too. Yeah. Cool. That could be sick. Uh, so yeah, I mean, um, they're already going to. Um, kill Ace, but the the reason is like why it's so important for them to execute Ace is because they want to eradicate the bloodline of Roger. So it wasn't good enough to keep him in the prison cell. They're like, because of your blood, we need to kill you. So that's not something that Ace had any control of. Uh, but it's something that the Navy is seeing as like a necessary thing that they need to carry out for justice. Like yeah, imagine if Ace it it so public. Imagine if Ace has just decided to become like a small town baker somewhere or something, <laughs> and they just the Navy's like, "I sorry, man, gotta kill you." Like, yeah. it's like they totally would. Like, yeah, because I mean, they were willing to kill him as an infant. You know? Yeah, he, he did nothing at that. That time. has nothing to do with like his chosen career or not. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think we get like this um, <laughs> uh, cool moment too, where uh, the gates of justice start to open. And then uh, we have this moment where Buggy puts his arms up and like like it looks like the light's coming down. And I'm like he's like the savior. Like Buggy, did you do this? It's like he's almost like Moses or something. Like, <laughs> but like Buggy's like playing into it, and they're like, "Oh, the Lord will provide." And uh, they think he's a messenger from God, and like he, he's kind of like, you know playing along with it. But he's like, "But who really opened it? He, he doesn't know. He's just going with it." Is it the will of heaven that I become king. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's pretty great. And do you guys have thoughts on uh, Whitebeard's fleet? Dripped out of the main... designs. Mm -hmm. Also, the design of um, the Moby Dick ship and like how, how it breaches here in the middle is kind of cool, like a like a whale breaching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very epic. Pretty on point, but yeah, Whitebeard has um, several like pirate crews under his fleet. So there are separate crews that are you know their own ships and they have their own captains, but they're under the overall banner of Whitebeard. So they're part of his fleet. So like Whitebeard is like kind of like the the big shot, like calling like all the shots. Like he's the one in control. They're all kind of like under his um, command. But the captains of their own ships also, you know, it's like essentially there's like a hierarchy, but they, they have their own crews and captains as well. So we're introduced to a few of them here. So we have, uh, we have Doma, Thunderlord, McGuy, which is my favorite name, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Calvin brothers, uh, Royal Spider Squad. Um, yeah, so these are people that like, we haven't seen before, but there's just something about them because they're part of Whitebeard's fleet. It just kind of makes you feel like the, like the reactions that um, the Navy's having. It's like, oh, these are big names. These are big players. Like, it just makes them seem like, to me, it makes them more like, epic. It's like, oh, man, like these are like, you know, big shot pirates, like all of a sudden coming in. So for us, like we're just seeing for the first time, but it kind of gives that impression to me. How about you guys? Yeah. I think it's the nail on the head. Yeah, Agreed. spot on. Because <laughs> you know, like Whitebeard is the greatest pirate power in this world. So this is like a first time seeing the whole fleet together, which is yeah. pretty cool. And yeah, I think it does illustrate that kind of like you know we have 
ships as far as the eye can see here. Yeah. Rolling up. <laughs> like they yeah, came so in they're... numbers. So like the reaction is they're all distinguished captains of the new world. They're 43 ships in all, but Whitebeard and his division leaders are nowhere to be seen. These are definitely pirates aligned with Whitebeard. So yeah, it really kind of gives like that like impression that like the Navy is kind of like, all right, these are big players. We got to you know, watch out here. And then the fact that they have the division leaders on top of that who are presumably stronger, even bigger threats than all these new world pirate captains. Mm just adds on to the threat they're facing down. Yeah, and then we um we see yeah Whitebeard himself make his appearance. Yeah, he says my beloved son had better be all right. <laughs> I'm coming ace. <laughs> Epic. So cool. And we are seeing the new Whitebeard logo uh mm. is being applied here because remember in the past how we'd seen like the um the yeah. old version of it. So now it's just like a regular cross. Um, I actually, th I do think it, it looks better. Okay. So I think it's a, a, yeah. an improvement. Yeah, so that's where we uh, we leave the volume. What a cliffhanger! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready. I'm beyond. I'm beyond hyped. This is like the biggest moment that <laughs> there has been. This is the biggest of all the moments. It seems to like I've all culminated <laughs> to this. And the whole world is involved. That's yeah, a global scale. And the Navy kind of upped the ante in the last chapter announcing the bloodline because it seems like that kind of added to their spectacle of wanting to make Ace's heading such like a beheading such a like a public um, spectacle that the whole world yeah. would see. Like not only to lure out Whitebeard and kind of draw him into a war that they they have the upper hand, um, kind of setting a trap for Whitebeard, um, but also announcing the end of Goldie Rogers line and that impact on the pirating world too. So it's coming to a head, man. And I'm yeah. hyped to see the outcome. Yeah, so it does make um, more sense, I think, with that context, like why they are making such a public display of this. Right. Because uh, he's not just like some no-name pirate. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we did wrap up Impel Down. Mm, so how yeah. about we update, uh, well, how about we update the rankings for, uh, for our arcs? Uh, how about we start with Sean? Sure. Uh, let me maneuver back around here. At the very, very tippy top of S rank, we have Arlong Park, then Alabasta, then Eni's Lobby. We then move down to A rank. We have Water 7, then Sabaody, then Barati, then Skypea, then Little Garden, then Loke Town, uh, Drum Island, Romance Dawn. We hit B. At the very top of B, we have Amazon Lily, then Jaya, then Orange Town, then Syrup Village, then Whiskey Peak, then Reverse Mountain, and then Long Ring, Long Land. I have nothing in C. I have one in D, which is Sir the Bark, for the reasons that everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am putting Impel Down between Sabaody and Barati in A rank. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Evan, how about you walk us through your rankings? Okay, my rankings start in S tier with Alabasta, Arlong Park, Baratier, Skypea, Ennis Lobby, Water 7. In A rank, I have Thriller Bark, Drum Island, uh, Saba Odi, Amazon Lily, Little Garden, Lodge Town, Jaya, Romance Dawn, Sierra Village. And then in B tier, I have Long Ring, Long Land, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain, and Orange Town. And I think I'm going to put Impel down. I think I'm debating on which side of Ennis Lobby I want to put it. Um, and I think I'm going to put it above Ennis Lobby. So that'd be between Skypea and Ennis Lobby in S rank, in S tier. All right. And I think, I think this was just such a fun arc. Um, and it's kind of like the first time we see luffy kind of he like literally built an entire crew in this arc like i think <laughs> it's just it's such a testament to like luffy's 
ability to become friends with somebody and then immediately put all of their trust in somebody, which has definitely been uh, a theme throughout, but it was cool to see it kind of consolidated in this chapter where he makes a bunch of new allies, including old enemies and old friends, um, and kind of has this like revolutionary moment where he turns uh, Impel down, which is such a cool setting. Like it's, it's, it's its own little world that Luffy kind of comes into and just flips on its head. Kind of like he did to Amazon Lily. He kind of like <laughs> single-handedly stepped into this environment and completely had a huge impact on it. And um, I'm kind of debating moving my rankings in S tier around a little bit to keep Water 7 in S tier and maybe move NS Lobby and um, Impel down into like top of A tier. Okay. Just because I just because I don't know, that just feels good with like this. I think the scale of the arcs or the scale of these arcs that we're ranking. Um but both Ennis Lobby and Impel Down I thought were like really fun, well written, exciting new arcs that I really enjoyed. Okay, so are you swapping any Lobby and Water Seven? And um we'll okay, so I'll I'll put Water seven at the bottom of my S tier behind Skypea, and then top of A tier it'll be uh, Impel Down and Ennis Lobby, both top of A. Okay, so moving Ennis Lobby behind Water seven and down to A tier. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay, uh, and how about you, Cody? Uh, I love Impel Down. I think the setting is so detailed. It's such a nice coming together of all these different pieces Oda's put together. Um, Jinbei's awesome. Magellan's a great character. It's really see cool seeing Luffy uh, be in such a desperate situation and having to uh, work his way through it. And like Evan alluded to, uh, rebuild his own crew in in the in what is hell in One Piece. Um, Uh, the scale of it doesn't quite it hit me in the same way as other arcs. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't give me that same like. Oh, th this was like the best. Not to disparage Impel Down, but just to uh, hype up those other ones even further. So I'm gonna put Impel Down. Or sorry, my rankings right now are uh, S tier Water Seven, Baratie, Arlong Park, Any Sloppy, Alabasta. A tier is Drum Island, Sabaody, Thriller Bark, Jaya, Amazon Lily, Orange Town, Skypea, and Romance Dawn. And then B is Syrup Village, Reverse Mountain, Log Town, Longwing Longland, Little Garden, and Whiskey Peak. And as for Impel Down, I'm going to put it near the top of A, uh, right after Drum Island, right before Saba Odi. But the three of those are just, uh, I think, as I uh, mentioned and agonized over at the end of Saba Odi, they're incredibly, <laughs> incredibly close together. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, so uh, I'll just go through mine um, as well. So S rank, I had Alabasta, uh, Anislavi, Arlong Park, Water 7, Saba Odi, Jaya, Throw Bark, Drum Island, A tier is Skypea, Long Ring Longland, Baratie, Little Garden, B tier was Syrup Village, Log Town, Amazon Lily, Orange Town, Romance Dawn, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain. Uh, so I think I'm closer to Cody on this one for Impel Down. Uh, it is a fun arc, and I think there's a lot of like really fun things about it. Um, I do think it's exciting. Um, I, I was saying throughout our discussions, it's been like a roller coaster. It's always like going up and down. You never know like what's going to happen. Um, the stuff with like Mr. Two um, is amazing. Um, Ivan Kopp as a character being introduced there, I think is also amazing stuff. Uh, but I also do feel like uh, it's got, like a strength and a weakness that the, uh, there's no Straw Hat crew. Um, I think it's a bold move, and I think it's interesting to see an arc without them. But it also is a shame that you know they're not present. Um, so yeah, I think it's a strength and a weakness of the arc. Uh, so I think kind of like cancel each other out in a way. Um, <laughs> um, but with with Impel Down, I do feel like it kind of recontextualizes some of my my arc rankings. So I did shift them a little bit. So. Uh, I'm actually going to put Impel down between Drum Island and Skypea, uh, but I did shift down uh, some of my arcs. So currently, 
Uh, my new rankings will be S rank Alabasta and Isabi Arm Park, Water 7, Sabaudi Jaya. A tier is Thorough Bark, Drum Island, Impel Down, Skypea. B tier is Long Ring, Long Land, Barate, Little Garden, Surf Village, Log Town. C tier is Amazon Lily, Orange Town, Romance Non, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain. So by putting arcs in C tier, I'm not saying that they're bad arcs. I'm just saying in the overall hierarchy of One Piece, uh, I think those are arcs that I think fall under a different level. I think there's um, a distinction between some of these arcs that um, as we start going throughout the series, I think we can get clear lines as to what makes these One Piece arcs, you know, certain tiers. And I, I think that for me, this is where I'm starting to draw those distinctions. I just wanted to have a clear distinction between some of the arcs that are going to be more towards the bottom now. As we start to get other arcs too, um, that I, I just feel like we're going to be exposed to some new things in the series, and I, I just wanted to kind of set the stage for uh, my future opinions. That's totally fair. I'll probably do something similar very soon. I feel like it's, this is getting harder and harder. Um, <laughs> but also, in a sense, is getting. Um, a little easier just because we have like a larger pool of information, a yeah. larger amount of arcs to kind of like gauge and compare and contrast. But yeah, uh, I do enjoy it. I think it's really fun getting to to rank the arcs um, <laughs> and kind of look at them as a whole and compare them to, to the others. It's been fun. Yeah, I just think it's fun because it's a little bit of a snapshot of like seeing what about One Piece it, that you enjoy the most. So mm -hmm. I think it says a lot about you as a One Piece fan. Because um, I've been saying everybody's arcs are so different because we enjoy different elements of, of One Piece. We all enjoy the same things, but there's certain things that we enjoy more than others. And I think that the arc rank is kind of highlight that a little bit for each other. Okay, so we are um, close to wrapping up here. I did want to just also get the villain rankings as well. Uh, because we haven't done one in a little while. The last one we did was uh, Moria. Uh, but currently we have S rank, Crocodile, and Arlong. Uh, a tier, we have Moria, Aniru, Buggy, Luchi. B tier, we have Kuro, Foxy, Wapple, and Krieg. Uh, so, Sean, I know you've mentioned strong opinions of Magellan, but where would you put Magellan in this ranking? I would put Magellan in A tier, uh, beneath Buggy, above Luchi. Okay. Yeah, so uh yeah, higher than expected. He would be S he would be S tier <laughs> if not for the thing. <laughs> it's that simple. Like he's yeah. <laughs> fantastic and would be S tier for me if not for that. But in, if it is exists, he's A tier. <laughs> okay, Evan, how about you? Ah, this is tough. I also am thinking A tier. Um I've just loved the creativity and the the art that we've gotten to see with his devil fruit um but i also feel that way about enru and moria so i'm kind of like i'm thinking maybe in between moria and enru there's okay. also i don't want to interrupt evan here but there's the reason having now seen more buggy i like mm -hmm. buggy that much more like without the context of buggy and impel down mm -hmm. i might put magellan but now like are we do we keep that in mind or like, are we allowed to be, I mean, I assume you're going to say yes, but like new knowledge of crocodile and buggy, for instance, may affect placement in the future. So like what they do now, or like, what do you think? Or was it set in stone at the time of we read them in their arc or something? Yeah, I think it's more like based on their arc, but I, okay. I do have to admit I had, I do have a little bias for buggy because I do have this context for the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. So I know he's a, a better character than we initially see him to be. Um, which I think it kind of is why he's a little bit higher than he probably would have been otherwise. Um, but yeah, that, that's my, my thoughts on that. Fair enough. Uh, and Cody, where would you put Magellan? <sighs> Definitely in A tier as well. Um, either right below, right above or right below Lucci. Um, so that fourth or fourth or fifth spot in the the tier list uh i'd say right below luchi for me personally and that speaks more to my my own place as a luchi enjoyer yeah and i'm actually right there with you 
I know um, throughout the arc, I, like I probably seemed higher Magellan than you know both Sean and Evan. Well, maybe not Evan, but um, but Sean. But I also just kind of feel like Magellan. Yeah, he's very like threatening and formidable. But I also just feel like as a villain, like in his role, he's not super interesting. And um, like as a like a personality, like he's very much a force. But like I also don't feel like. Uh, again, if you compare it to Crocodile, Crocodile has motives. Like he has like the swagger about him. Uh, he's like a, a very interesting type of villain to to watch. Um, but I think he, he's a little bit simpler, and he's less involved um, as like a full on villain in the sense. But like he is the the primary force that is stopping Luffy from trying to achieve his goals. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as a villain and how much I enjoy him, I actually. I agree with Cody. I would put him after Luchi in A tier. Hey, works for me. I thought it was I'll agree, I'll, agree with that. I'll bring him <laughs> okay. down a bit. I, I do feel like he isn't he isn't as like inherently evil as our other villains as well. Like, yes, he does take some casualties with using his uh <laughs> ability, some innocent bystanders, if you will. You have but to yeah, keep going. He's I'll, not like I'll... inherently evil like the rest of our villains in A in A tier. I Magellan is evil. Like, I'm never going to convince, like, he tortures people on the regular. Like, even if they deserve it, I'm never going to be like, yay, torture. Like, it's just, <laughs> so he, it's it's just, that's, I don't know. It's in the world of One Piece, though, and we take this in the context of this fucked up society they live in. Yeah, he's surprisingly noble. But mm-hmm. in the sense of, like, yeah, I can't agree with you. He's evil. <laughs> he's a monster who tortures people <laughs> on the regular in the most horrific ways possible. So, I don't know. That's true. Yes. I mean, it does. He, <laughs> he, he no does. Uh, no <laughs> point. He does. Uh, yeah, label his move Hell's Judgment. So, um, uh, but yeah, so I, I say we'll, we'll put him uh, at the bottom of A tier after Luchi. Okay, but with uh, all that being done, that will conclude this week's episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. You can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at We Are Reading One Piece Podcast at Buzzsprout dot com or on our YouTube channel at We're Reading One Piece. This is a spoiler-free channel up to where we've recorded the podcast, so if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. You can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Power King Codex for more One Piece content. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can reach us at We're Reading One Piece at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from listeners, so if you're enjoying the show, or if you have any suggestions on how we can make it better, let us know. Next episode, we'll be starting Volume 57, Paramount War. I've been Joel, and I've been joined by Sean. This has been Sean. I don't think it doesn't work. <laughs> I want my son! Give me my son! <laughs> Evan. Thanks for listening. And Cody. We made it out of jail! Woo! <laughs> Time for war. <laughs> out of the frying pan and into the fire. But be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mr. One's going full Beyblade. Yeah. <laughs> He's letting it rip.